Happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Chris Rabia Show on Instagram Live. I got Kinnard Alley on back on the show. So thanks guys for tuning in. Hope you guys are doing well. Oh my goodness. We're less than two months from this year's tournament. It's going to be a blast. I'm locked in. Kinnard saw the nail. Let's go on and say hi to her. Hey, Kinnard. Hi. So great to see you again. How are you doing? I'm good. Welcome back. How are you today? Oh my gosh, I'm doing great. Doing awesome. And so we have like a split time zone thing again, which is super fun. Yeah. yeah. And so in your East Coast, I'm in Israel right now. So it's really great that we get to connect with each other, you know, in different parts of the world right now. So yay. Absolutely. How's the music like going for you? Yeah, Music Life is going really, really well, and we're actually gearing up for a concert for this coming Friday here in Tel Aviv, March 18th. And it's going to be, and for those who uh, live in Tel Aviv or are in Israel, would love to come to Tel Aviv, uh, it is going to be at noon at the Israel Conservatory of Music. So please, please come, and it's going to be amazing because it will be a, bar a concert of Baroque music. And I'll actually be doing a couple of pieces from the program tonight. Uh, live on your show, so yay. And uh, the concert is going to be uh, one of arias and duets with uh, Nicholas Tamanio, who is amazing. And uh, he uh, actually sang in uh, the Met broadcast of uh, Agrippina opposite uh, Joyce Di Donato, uh, you know, at the Met, just to give you an idea of how amazing he is. So we're super excited to have him here in his first visit to Israel. I'll be working with, uh, you know, our pianist who's Dan Deutsch. I've worked with him for the last 10 years. And so it's just going to be so much fun, you know, doing Bach and Handel and Gluck. And, uh, you know, and I couldn't be more thrilled. Oh, so absolutely. it's really great. <laughs> All right, want to start with your first song today? Yes, absolutely. So this is going to be, and I actually realized that in my enthusiasm of talking about this program, I uh, forgot to mention Purcell, of course. So I'm going to be starting off with his uh, Strike the Vial. And actually I'm realizing my earring's a bit askew. Okay, there we go. Now we're on the right foot. So I'm going to start off with this song, uh, Strike the Vial. So here we go. Strike the Vial, Strike the Vial. Touch, touch, touch. Touch, touch the youth. Wake the up, wake the up, wake the up in spite flute. Wake the up in spite flute. Strike the viol, strike the viol. Touch. Touch, 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 touch the lutes. Wake the up, wake the up, wake the up in spite of lute. Wake the up in spite of lute. Sing your patroness's praise. Sing your patroness's praise. Sing, 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 sing in cheer and harmonious lays. Sing your patroness's praise. Sing your patroness's praise. Sing, 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 sing in she. questions and answers absolutely all right say goodbye 2021 we're already in the third month of 2022 and march madness is underway for college basketball so what are you most looking forward to in 2022 i have to uh, 
So first of all, I have to admit, I haven't been following March Madness nearly as much as I should. But, um, uh, but as for what I'm looking forward to in 2022, uh, I mean, just the whole year feels like a very open road in the best way. You know, I think we're, and so uh, I'm very excited about that. Uh, I mean, I'm just remembering that this time last year, we were at least uh, here in Israel, we were just getting our, about our first uh, COVID vaccines or so, or we were in the midst of doing that which now feels like almost a lifetime ago, thankfully, or at least to me it does. And so uh, it's very exciting to see where things will progress from here. And uh, I, I think that um, uh, th things can only improve, things can only go up, fingers crossed. I mean, it's a very interesting <clears throat> time in the world right now, but I am optimistic going forward and I will knock on wood as I say this, so. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, moving right along. It's time for some Nacho Music questions. Excuse my language on the first one. Have you seen Johnny Knoxville's new movie, Jackass Forever? I have not seen that. Yeah, I, I also haven't been following the Jackass series as much. Like, I did yeah, a little bit back in the day, but I've, uh, but I haven't been as connected to the Jackass series. All right, I've seen it. I was laughing my butt off in the movie theater. I was cracking up too much, and I won't tell you the spoilers. That was really hilarious. <laughs> I appreciate you not revealing the spoilers. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Did you get a chance to see Fast and Furious 9? I haven't seen that either. I'm realizing the depths of my cult cultural li illiteracy right now, so I'll need to remedy that later. Yeah. <laughs> right. Have you seen Space Jam, A New Legacy? I saw the original Space Jam. I haven't seen the new, uh, the new Space Jam. All so right. I'm adding that to my list. Gotcha. Yeah, not going to tell the spoilers on those two movies. So you're welcome on that. I've seen it. <laughs> Thank you. That's All very right. considerate of you. Yeah, next one. Did you get a chance to see 007's No Time to Die? No, I haven't. Who is the James Bond in that one? I'm losing track of my James, James Bonds. Yeah, this is Daniel Craig's final James Bond movie. So I've seen it, and I'm not going to tell you the spoilers. So you've got to check it out. OK. So yeah. will was, do. What a way yeah. to finish a, finish a James Bond career you know, for Daniel Craig. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the question is, I don't know who's going to be the next James Bond. That's the question on everyone's mind. Right. Is there an actually I was thinking uh, I'll probably need to ask this uh, uh, later, but I'll, I'll actually ask it now. Do you have any idea who it's going to be? Mm. or any like bucket list kind of ideas for the next James Bond? I don't know. I don't know. That's uh, pretty hard to tell, but you may never know who's going to be the next James Bond. You may never know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, there can be some really surprising picks for that role, but yeah. that actually makes but... it really interesting. So there's so many ways to do it. Absolutely. All right. Well, now it's time for some more Ask Chris. What are some more questions that you want to know about me? Yeah, so I want to know, I mean, what have you been up to? I mean, I think the last time we, we met, or among the last times we met, we played Jeopardy, and, you know, that was, uh, that was quite a fierce and fun battle. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so so what have you been up to since then? Yeah, you had to call it a tie with two opera singers on Jeopardy. I know, I know you <laughs> were kind of struggling, I guess. Were you kind of struggling or something? A little bit. I mean, I would consider myself as somebody who definitely has the uh, potential to grow you know, in Jeopardy, um, and, and then some. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I, I'll, be, I'll be shooting for that, aspiring, uh, aspiring to that, so. Yeah, absolutely. But by the way, you know, I was back to doing training camp. I'm in training camp right now for this basketball tournament that I'm going to be preparing, because oh, cool. i this right now, because last year, it was a fluke when I was playing a Labor Day basketball tournament. Only scored nine points, only one rebound. But this year, I'm playing an Invitational June 11 to June 12, so if you come on down, you can get a chance to see me play for this tournament. Oh, wow. And you mean see, see you live. That's, yeah. I mean, that's almost, uh, uh, that's almost something to get adjusted to as well, because, like, I've never heard you say that before, you know, come live. You know, I think this is another one of these things as we emerge from COVID in which we're saying, wait, you mean we're doing things live now? <laughs> Yeah, Why did I have a live concert life. coming up on Friday? But it's still an adjustment after so long in which we've had lockdowns and all sorts of things, and that's still going on. Um, so, it, it, you know, so in any case, I'm glad that things are moving forward, and especially with you playing live and your invitation to play live. So that's yeah, awesome. It's live. And Congrats. Where are wearing these bad boys. These are the LeBron 19 Legacy. Yeah, I'm going to be wearing these bad boys, and uh, 
I'm trying to make history on this one, I guess. I know everyone's telling me that I'm already locked in in less than three months for this year's tournament. And uh, I'm trying to make history as the first ever autistic player to ever win a championship. Like, I, I mean, this is the time that I got to make history for basketball. So, yeah. Yeah, no, but, I, and I think you could do it. I mean, that's really incredible. And you're quite accomplished with uh, basketball. I saw that. So, yeah. yeah, and by the way, I have to ask uh, about the sneakers because those are beautiful. Did you have those specially made? Or, you know, is it one of those things that you can custom make? Because those are, um, no, those are fabulous. I got them for Christmas last year. I got them for Christmas last year. I tried them on. They're not really heavy when I try them on, but when I get to the test run for this year's tournament, I think they're going to be working just fine for me. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So be wearing those when you play. So. Absolutely. Any more questions for me? Uh, not for now, but I'm sure they'll be popping in and out, you know, as we speak. And so, yeah, no, but I'm so excited for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, two early predictions for this year's tournament. How many points do you think I can score in my little redemption tournament that I'm going to make history on? Uh, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a tough one just because I'm not well versed enough in basketball, honestly, to know like how many points is a lot of points and how few is like too few. So I honestly don't know. I would just say a heck of a lot of points. And especially with those sneakers serving as like your magical juju, you know, when you're out <laughs> on the basketball court. <laughs> so a heck of a lot of points. Well, other, all other my guests, they were guessing probably 50 or 32 to 30, 15. 10 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. So let's call the 50 into the universe. You just want so, you want 50 points on this? Yeah, as in five zero, just to make sure that's extra clear. Like let's call yeah. it in. Yeah. I mean, I need to play a lot of minutes because last year I didn't get to play a lot of minutes. This year I need to play a lot of minutes ASAP because I haven't got a chance to play a lot of minutes for this year's tournament. So I mean, this has mm. got to be the time that I got to make history. And then hopefully once I win this championship, I want all you guys to surround me while I'm crying. And hopefully, like, I'll be hugging all of y'all. I'll be really hugging all of you guys. So, yeah. As you were speaking just now, I was sending, like, this is my attempt to send, like, magical juju, like, positive energy yeah. towards that. Yeah. I, mean, I can send you a big invitation if you really want to see me play. How's that? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, did you get a chance to check out my sit-down interview that I just did? I did not, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. I mean, I just had, you know, a death in the family, actually, <laughs> this week. So, no. <laughs> so, there's been a lot going on. But um, but I promise to get to the sit-down interview. Well, yeah. guess what? You're in luck because probably two to three of my guests almost cried while watching that sit-down interview that I just did. And... If you take a look at right now, and if you start crying at this, I mean, this might be the fourth guest to ever cry on the show. So I love how oh. you guys like watching the sit down interview and getting you guys get emotional. So I want you guys oh. to watch this interview. So have a look at it. Take a look. And here we go. Take a look. Mm -hmm. is considered a big part of Filipino culture. And for Raymond Sarabia, a U.S. Navy veteran in Virginia Beach. The sport is his father's legacy. Raymond's dad played in the UWAP from Manila Central University in the 1950s. And there's the family. There's me, there's my mom, there's my dad, and there's my younger brother on the left. Aww. So sweet. One of old son, Chris, developed a stronger passion for the sport, which began when he was just four years old. When Chris was a senior, and there's a newspaper Congress, article. If y'all read it, good. If you didn't, read it. I remember it. <laughs> he finally got to play and ended up scoring his four point career best. The four points is a big deal because Chris has Asperger syndrome, a form of autism. Giving the chance for kids like him mm -hmm. to experience you know, being a part of a team and at the same time giving the opportunity to play after how many unsuccessful tries. Raymond says basketball is a source of hope and encouragement, not only for Chris, but also for himself. Raymond is currently battling stage four indolent lymphoma, a type of blood cancer.
5 to 10 years left na lang sa buhay niya. And you go with the name Here's my last last year's tournament. Basketball team from Virginia, a team of fathers and sons. The team competed in a recent intercity tournament. Ah, quick note, fact: premature celebration. Missed the high five. Whatever. Filipino Basketball Association, or VBFBA, where over 50 teams from 15 different U.S. cities competed. Those without fathers in the team still feel some family love. I think with my details, it's a, uh, it's probably like a big bond. I think uh, with me, like, it's like almost like father, but kind of this entire event, you know, practicing uh, like once a week. Uh, it's gonna be closer, I think, to feeling what, like, you know, fatherhood is. Yung father niya na matay when he was uh, just a preschooler. So uh, we acted as his, uh, as a family na kami yung father, kami yung baka yung basketball dad. For Air Force veteran Alan Araneta, who is frequently away from his family due to work, playing basketball with his son is a bonding experience. Playing with my son in a you know in a, a tournament like this or a league, so the uh, experience was actually uh, keep us more uh, malapit. Although the Virginia fathers and sons team exited the beach ball in tournament without a single victory, they somehow experienced. A winning moment when during the final game, a three-point shot was released by Chris just a few seconds before the buzzer hit. There's one good quote this I love from Alistair Beck while watching Jeffrey. We're trying to build a gentler and kinder society, and if we all pitch in just a little bit, we can get there. So just do your best and forget the rest. Monica Velazzo, ABS-CBN News. Oh, doggone Virginia it. Beach. Virginia. That's the truth right there. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> oh, but, you know, good for you. I love that, you know, do your best and, you know, do your best and forget the rest. And, I mean, that's just so special. You yeah. know, it really speaks to the importance of families and, like, the support of family. So, you know, I, I and I didn't know about your situation with your family, but, you know, how special that you have that have that yeah. love. And I'm sorry about your dad's, uh, you know, yeah. illness. Uh, yeah. You're almost crying, Canary. You're almost crying. <laughs> I am almost crying. You got me for Clint over here. What? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what was your favorite moment when you saw that whole sit-down interview that I just did? Yeah. So, I think, well, I think that your shot toward the very, very end, I mean, it just kind of uh, put, put this special cap on everything, a bit more about what it says about moving on through life than the actual shot itself. So, you know, just re really good of you know that you're moving forward in a pos you know in a positive way and dealing with life's curveballs as best as you can so so that's really great and good for you oh, really thanks. yeah i was like you know what when i first moved here i just wanted to think about winning championships and my goal for 2022 is get some wins bring home a championship and then after that hopefully i can retire after i win this championship so that's my plan for right yeah all I need is one championship, and then I'm just going to enjoy retirement. That's all I really want. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So, I mean, good but, juju for that as well. Good energy. Oh, thanks a lot. All right, well, speaking of the basketball, did you fill out your bracket for this year's March Madness tournament? I did not. I mean, again, I'm, like, so woefully, like, basketball illiterate, so I haven't filled – I didn't know there was a thing to fill out. That's how, like, behind and, like, illiterate about basketball that I, uh, I am. Uh, what would you um, – like, uh, are there particular teams to, like, keep your eye on or, you know, how does that work? Look out Look out for Gonzaga because they might have a chance of redemption because last year they lost in the national championship against Baylor, but this time I think they got the chance to win it, so – I'm I'm rooting for Gonzaga on it, and I already fill out my bracket this year, so yeah. Oh, that's awesome! So they're kind of the underdogs right now. I think so. I, I really. All think right. That. Yeah. I think oh, I'm good for them. You know, coming yeah. back. All coming right. Back well, and have you seen the television show NBA Open Court? No, I haven't. Yeah. All right. Well. It's Scripted and uh, also, who was the best or worst trash talker in basketball history, in your own opinion? Uh, again, like I, for in order to be able to identify um, my worst trash talkers in basketball history, I would have to know about the trash talkers in basketball history. Uh, right. So I, I wouldn't know. Like All I might right. as well take a name out of a hat and say, so. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you, Larry Bird has got to be one of the best of it. But this is what Steve Kerr had to say about being a trash talker 
and being a great player. So have a look at it and take a listen. Mm-hmm. You know what? As somebody said it earlier, to, to be a trash talker, you got to be a great player. So I just listened. Oh, are, you are you kidding me? Like, get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he's right. He's right. Yeah, you got to be a trash talker. You got to be a great player. And for all of you opera singers out there, guys, don't trash talk, okay? My advice for you is to enjoy the ride and enjoy the moment on stage. Just don't trash talk. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Enjoy the moment on stage and enjoy the moments off stage. Don't trash talk. Be kind. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, trash talking used to be a hobby. Well, no, it's not. It's not a hobby. That's that's all I can tell you. So, yeah. 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 All right. Well, last question I want to ask you. Can I bring you back again as a special guest of my show on Instagram Live? I would love that. Listen, I will happy to I'll be happy to be a guest for you like any day of the week. Yeah, so absolutely. I got you, Canara. And hopefully you'll get a chance to see me play on June eleventh to June twelfth. So fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Yeah. And do you send me the invite? I got you. All right, final song you're gonna be singing today and give us a little backstory of it. Yeah, so this will be another piece on the uh, Baroque program that we're going to be singing here this Friday on Tel Aviv. And just to give an extra little plug, this is for uh, for those who just tuned in. This is going to be uh, here in Tel Aviv on March 18th uh, at noon. It's going to be at the Israel Conservatory of Music. It's going to be a, con- a concert of Baroque arias and duets, you know, with me and also the amazing uh, Nicholas Tamanya visiting Israel for the first time. And uh, we'll have Dan Deutsch as our pianist, whom I've worked for for ten years, uh, worked with for ten years, and love him to death. He's amazing, and uh, they both are. And uh, in any case, this selection from the concert program is going to be an aria from Handel's opera called uh, Agrippina. It's called uh, Bel Piacere, or you know, like a beautiful pleasure, Bel Piacere. And uh, this is one of Popea's arias in which he's extolling the pleasures of a faithful love. fun it's been so fun to prepare this program and uh, we're gonna have so much fun performing it so yep. it's just joy all around absolutely and before we end today's uh, show i wanted to give you a little preview of this year's invitational that i'm going to be playing at so i want to take mm-hmm. you back to the way back machine all the way back you'll see what happens take a look and here we go let's do it Oh, Sully by sponsorships was 1989. So, uh, you got Minnesota and Houston in, in this first round series. Uh, and this is, we're going to get in the way back machine uh, to 1997. Yeah, 1997, time traveling machine. Yes. Happy birthday, man. But we're going back to the regular season of 1997 because when I think Minnesota Houston, I think one game in particular. And it was a two point game. The Rockets to Charles Barkley leading at Target Center. 
So pretend that Charles Barkley would be me. So that's what the point is. Please, in the way back machine, as you're looking Fred Carr, as you're looking to burn one with Doc Rivers and Dick Versace working the sideline. So this is what happened. Here's the foul. The last few seconds of the fourth quarter, or probably the second half. And this guy that I'm going to be talking to, I'm going to be talking trash to him. I'll be like, bleep them, bleep them, cussing out, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> I can, I mean, Aww. yeah. But this is what happened. There you go. You ain't seeing that. trash too much okay <laughs> that's always a good promise to keep yeah yeah i got ya all right well for those of y'all are watching the planet right now y'all go follow canara follow our socials follow our music as simple as that everybody and before you go would you like to take a picture i would love to do that let's do it a you transatlantic picture smile at the camera whenever you're ready on three one two three got it yay well, thanks a lot, Canara, for coming on. Love you so much. Can't wait to be back. Thank you so here. much. Love you, too. Oh, it's a lovely oh, heart. Yay. All right. <laughs> Yay. Love all around. And love to you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Well, guys, Canara is great. Give her a follow. That was awesome. All right, y'all. See you guys tomorrow. Be kind of one another. Stay safe. We're all in this together. And the words of Paul Kangas tonight, this report. I'm Chris Robbie. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today on my show. Right on Instagram Live, wishing all of you the best of goodbyes.